Well, today is the 7th of June, and so it is Trinity Sunday. And so we celebrate the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit today. And uh, we are also, I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, talk to Walter. Uh, we had a few people, of course, every week folks come by and receive the reserved sacrament so that they can take communion uh, because they're not able to worship with us here in, uh, on Sunday morning. And we're going to change the time. Uh, because the world was volunteering to do this, and because now that we have people worshiping with us, uh, there is uh, less demand, I guess you could say. And so on Saturdays from, what did we say, 8 to 9? No, 9 to 10. Thank you. Walt was giving me a heads up. Uh, from 9 to 10 on Saturdays, folks can come by Holy Cross as in the past. We can just change the time, and we can take it from two hours to one hour. So from 9 to 10 on Saturday, we're supposed to pick up the reserved sacrament and then consume it as part of the worship service today for those who are not able to attend. And of course, we continue uh, the prayer for um, spiritual communion uh, for those who are not even able to do that, but still are able to worship with us and still efficacious. So uh, we are not saying that that's a second class thing at all, uh, but we want to make uh, this worship service as available uh, and to as many people as possible as we uh, worship the risen Lord. Uh, I want to give you a, a sort of announcement. We are all familiar with um, the tragic death of George Floyd. And our country, you just, um, you would just have to not have any news on whatsoever. Uh, to be unaware, you just not have to travel anywhere to be unaware. Well, the pastors in Sumter got together this past Wednesday morning and uh, there were about 80 plus pastors together from all races, from various ages, from the Sumter area. And one of the things that we talked about, we made two kind of bold commitments. One was that within the next 30 days, we would have a teaching. Uh, we would talk about on Sunday morning the issue of racism. And uh, I've already dealt with it a little bit because this impacted my heart the very moment that I watched that video. Uh, but we all committed uh, as pastors in Sumter to, to teach one, at least one Sunday within the next 30 days uh, on the issue of racism. We also made a commitment uh, to talk to law enforcement and see if we could do something different. And by different, we mean a march against racism and, uh, and for nonviolence together with law enforcement. And I was waiting to get the email, and the Sheriff's Department, the City Manager, Sumter Police Department all signed off on that. And so next Sunday afternoon, which is the 14th, uh, from, uh, we, will, we will gather at 5 p.m. at Grace Baptist Church on Calhoun Street and march against racism and forward nonviolence from Grace Baptist Church in Calhoun uh, to the Sumter County Courthouse. And so this is a joint effort of ministers in the area with law enforcement marching together. And uh, that set a sort of different twist to some of the other things. And uh, of course, I think it, uh, most of us have looked at these issues and realized this is a more critical issue than just one, uh, one killing. Uh, this involves racism that goes back to the very fabric of our society. Of course, it's not universal, it's not just an American issue, it's a universal worldwide issue. Uh, but we need to address it as Christians. And so uh, one of the things uh, I'm doing in mission this is inviting you with social distancing, uh, those who are watching, those who are present, uh, to join uh, with us on this march. So it's not just pastors and police, but pastors congregations interested citizens and police. And so more will be published on the website, but I want to just give you that heads up today as I'm able uh, to announce uh, uh, this um, issue. Uh, some folks have said how this is uh, divisive in our country, and indeed it is. But it's almost like the pandemic. What's divisive can also be unified. It depends on what we do with it. And I saw or heard a statistic the other day it said something that if you asked, uh, no matter across racial lines, if you asked anybody, um, would they condone uh, the killing of an innocent person? No, 
they wouldn't. When they want to have uh, the opportunity for uh, everyone to have uh, equal access and protection under the law, yes, they would. We have actually more than we agree about than we disagree about. What I see at play, this is for the what it's worth department, is the devil in the mix, who always seeks to divide and to be divisive and to create chaos, not unity. And so I see that at play, that as we try to come together, there are going to be forces at work to try to pull us apart. But remember, the victory is in Christ. The victory is in Jesus. The victory is his victory over sin and evil. And so as long as we're playing a part in that, I think we're going to be just fine. In fact, I feel like this could be a pivotal moment for our country. And so I invite you to pray about it. Our bishop, of course, is with me. You've seen that, I hope, on, on social media. We put it all uh, out uh, that our bishop has, has written along with the archbishop, uh, uh, the a a ACNA, uh, praying for uh, fasting and prayer, again, uh, against racism and for equality and against uh, violence. So, well, let us begin with our opening hymn and for Trinity Sunday. And then we'll get to you with our worship. We worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our lesson comes from the letter of St. Paul, which, the second letter of St. Paul, the church in Corinth. So that is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning with the fifth verse and continuing to the end of the chapter, to the end of the letter. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? I hope that you will find out that we have not failed the test. But we pray to God that you may do no wrong. Uh, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad that we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason I write these things while I am away from you, that when I come I may not have to be severe in my use of authority the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to now to stand as we continue with our gospel reading. The gospel comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 28, beginning with the 16th verse and continuing to verse 20. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, and some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth that's been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. To the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please join with me in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill our hearts and our minds with your presence. Enliven and invigorate our faith and our witness and our love for you and our love for others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A couple of reflections for you on this.
this Trinity Sunday. Now, Trinity Sunday is one of those dreaded Sundays because if you go into illustrations, they always break down. And so it's, it should be called somewhat Trinity slash heretical Sunday because there's a, a sort of a standard joke that when you try to explain God, you're guaranteed to fail because God is above explanation. The only thing we know about God is what he, God bless, he has chosen to reveal about himself to us. And that's why the scriptures are so important, because they are the divine revelation of God. All the way from uh, the gospel, from Genesis, all the way to the book of Revelation. It's the, it's the good news, the revelation of God to us. And in that revelation, we have an understanding that puts us squarely in, within our Jewish heritage, which we call Allah, of course, Jesus being a rabbi, uh, God's promise to Abraham and his descendants that a Savior would arise for all the world. And so in that, the, the Jewish faith, our rooted faith, is, is rooted in what's called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And so we do not walk away from that. Now, there are those that would accuse us of doing so, but we are monotheists. We believe in one God. So how do we get to the Trinity? We have one God and three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you hear that echoed in our gospel reading today, where Jesus gives the great commission to the church, and he says, baptize these converts in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, co-equal, in unity, always. That makes our faith the faith based on the revelation of God, very unique. There are many polytheists. There are many believers in many gods. There are also those who would believe in a singular God, a monotheistic, but it's not the same God as the one that is revealed in the scriptures. In fact, I've dealt with this before, but just the very use of the word Abba, Father, is unique and revolutionary and is 100% Christian. You will not find other monotheistic faiths using that phrase. Because even though they are monotheistic, the God that they worship is so powerful, so almighty, so disconnected in the sense that he doesn't have John 3.16. That all one can do in front of that God is submit, obey, and basically hope to make the God happy. If you look at our Jewish friends, they are awaiting the Messiah. They haven't accepted Christ as the Messiah. And so they are worshiping God and they're looking forward to the Messiah. We are Messianic in the sense that for us, we recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Again, as revealed in Scripture. And so we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's extremely dangerous and truly heretical for us to deny one of the three persons. Because to deny one of the three, the Father, or to deny the Son, or to deny the Holy Spirit, is to deny our understanding as of God as revealed to us in the Bible. And so at that point, we rejected him. And yet our society, and, and those sort of go along to get along attitudes, or, oh, we'll just talk about God. We won't talk about the Son. We won't talk about the Holy Spirit. We'll just talk about God. Well, if you do, you need to ask yourself, which God are we talking about? Because they are different. And please don't buy the bill of goods 
that say that they're that they're all the same. They're not. All you have to do is really ask a one who's knowledgeable in the faith of any faith, and they will be glad to set you straight. Now, does that mean that we hold a position where we feel better than other people? I hope not. Does that mean that we are going to be antagonistic toward other faiths? I hope not. Again, we have more in common as human beings than we do that separate us. And so my goal, anyway, is to always work within that common denominator that we have. Everybody wants their, 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 their health. Everybody, even a communist, wants to protect that which has been assigned to them. We all want our children to be better. We all want health. We all want to have a place to live, something that gives us satisfaction in life. We have many common denominators. But where we sell ourselves short and where we sell our faith short is when we deny our faith. Then, quite frankly, we lose our integrity. We lose, actually, the invitation to the table of interfaith discussion. A Christian who says all ways and all paths lead to God really isn't a Christian. They're walking away from the faith. <coughs> and what they're doing is they're losing the, the one unique thing we had at the table of interfaith discussion. We may as well become one of the polytheistics at that point. So I want to just sort of again remind us about how important the Holy Trinity is as an absolutely fundamental understanding of who we are. Because the word Christian means what? Little Christ. Who is Christ? Jesus. So if you deny Jesus, you deny Christianity. You can't be a little Christ if you don't even acknowledge him. So again, don't take my word for it. Read the scriptures. Look at the words again from our gospel reading. We're to go out and share this faith, the full revelation of God with other people. Not by the sword, not by compulsion, but by love, by love, and through a witness of our changed lives. Being known by the Father, being known by the Son, being known and infused by the Holy Spirit, is critical to our witness. You know, there's the old test. You know, St. Paul mentions test today, doesn't he, in his letter to the church in part. First thing he says is examine, test yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. First words of our reading, reading, test yourselves. Do you not realize this about yourself, that Christ Jesus is in you? The Holy Spirit is in you. We cannot deny this without denying the very foundations of our identity as Christians. And to do so is to walk away from the fullness of the revelation of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. And then there's a, a teaching of what that should look out, look like from St. Paul, one of many teachings of what the Christian life should look, look like. But here it is. Look at, if you're following along in chapter 13, the end of the second letter to Corinth. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. You see how important those uh, components are for our life and for our witness. So, again, Jesus gives the great commission in our gospel reading today. So my call on you and me is to recognize, and we shorten the readings today because the service has to be shorter. But the, the reading from the Old Testament was the reading from Genesis, when God created out of nothing by his own words. And we have the 
six days of creation, and on the seventh day he rested. And God said, let us make mankind in our image. And if we're ever dealing with the question of nonviolence and racism, we need to understand that every single human being is made in the image of God. Every single human being bears that fingerprint of God in our very vibrant being. And therefore, every human being is infinitely valuable. And so, yes, we're Christians and they're non-Christians. That's the state of where we are in our faith. But never does that take us to a place where we should do anything but say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, and invite others to receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. It's not about being greater or less than. It's being equal. But I'll close with, a, a, again, an old summary of the gospel. One beggar telling another starving beggar where to find the food. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall have an eternal life. All who drink from me shall have water that never runs dry. You shall have an eternal life. That's the promise from the revelation of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.
At this time, I invite you to prayers, intercessions, or thanksgivings, either given aloud or silently, conversing directly with God. <coughs> Thank you. 
And now as our Savior Christ has called us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The prayer of humble access to a join with it. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy to such that you gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, as gracious Lord, so to the flesh and your son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. This time I invite you to also join with me in the prayer for spiritual communion. It's found on page 677 the Book of Common Prayer, as well as printed in your handout. Dear Jesus, I believe you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all your faithful people gathered around the every altar of your church. And I embrace you all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lord. Body of Christ. Bread of heaven's salvation. Oh. 